Hi there. Welcome to yet another one of my videos. Um, this is a Mopar 833 transmission that I'm going to restore, uh, disassemble and assemble uh, in, in just with my simple tools here. Uh, but first a word uh, about the videos. I haven't been doing any videos for a while now, so I'm a little bit rusty. Um, there are various reasons for that. I had to build a new garage. I was going bananas in the old garage. And uh, well, let's not uh, talk too much about it. Uh, just dive into it. This is the four speed uh, transmission of the Green Challenger. Unfortunately, it needs some uh, maintenance. There is a noise in it, like a, a bearing rumble. And it's apparently uh, when we, we drive the car and come to the halt, we can hear the sound. Uh, it does not make any sound when it's on idle. By pressing the clutch and such, we cannot hear anything. So that indicates that it should not be the, uh, uh, the input uh, bearing, but probably the output bearing, the second main bearing. So let's find out. I will adjust the camera angle so that you can see a little bit better. So first of all, what do we know about this transmission? There are a number of, of, of markings and numbers on it. And one is here on the pad. Let me tell you, this transmission is rather heavy. Uh, it's cast iron. And uh, let me tell you, it's weight quite a bit. Here we have some, some stamped numbers. I will turn it around so that I can read it better. I need my glasses. Well, it says, 0E127520 that means 1970 E is Los Angeles and 127520 is, is a rather early production and um, it's very close it's not a matching transmission to the Green Challenger but it is very close as close as I can get for the moment we also have some other numbers here PP833 and the 10,000 day is 3035. In, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that is in mid of November 69. Mid of November 1969. We do also have some other numbers here. Here we have 1027, that means the 27th of October in 69. And here we have 1003, that's the 3rd of October. Uh, here we have a number saying 539. 539 means this is output shaft and it's a heavy duty transmission. It means it has the larger bearing here. We can see from this part here, it will have the small bearing in front of this, in the incoming axle. So here we have the 307 bearing, and here we have the 308. If this would be a Hemi or 440, it would have maybe the 18 spline axle and the 308 bearing in front and the 308 bearing at the rear. And these bearings are, believe it or not, metrical. There are some three something inches, but this one is 35 millimeter axle, 90 millimeter of outer diameter and 21 millimeter wide. And this one is 35 millimeter axle and 80 millimeter in outer diameter. 
Unfortunately, this is not a, a standard bearing. It's a very special bearing, special order. It, they don't make them anymore. The standard uh, bearing for a 90 millimeter outer diameter would have an axle of 40 millimeter. That's the standard dimension. So that's easy to come by, but it doesn't work in this transmission. Fortunately, they have been started manufacturing them again on a special order from China. So lucky for us, we can buy them again. So now I will start disassemble and I will also assemble this. <coughs> Forks made of brass, later they were made of steel. Well, by the first look at it, it looks rather okay. No major damages. Oh, we'll see. We'll take it apart. Take it from there. This part cannot be uh, taken out yet. We have to remove this first. So good so far. Now we need to remove the axle because this part won't come out. It won't come out this way because 
this part is too large to get out of the hole and it won't go this way because the bearing will interfere with the lower axle so what we need to do is to move the axle down then we can take out this part I will show you step by step how it is done so that you see it perfectly. This axle is a little bit complicated. That's why we need this special tool. It may it's made out of a, a broom stick. And it has the perfect length to fit within the case. And you'll understand why. So, small hammer, like this one, that's the one I use. Usually we need to remove the axle a little bit from its fittings. And remember, this axle can only go in that direction, from the front to rear. You cannot try to push it the other way. And I will explain why. Now it's time for the special tool. Slowly, slowly. You see what happens? Now the broomstick is inside of the rear of the lower axle. Now I can move it down in the housing. There we go. You hear? Nothing. This bearing is fine, but we are going to replace it anyhow. And now the bottom axle. There you have the broomstick. And what it does, it keeps the needle bearing in place. There it is. Nice and in place. Let's put it here. We are going to replace the needle bearings anyhow. Here we also have two washers at the end of the axle. We are going to replace them as well. One 
important thing to replace in these transmissions are this o-ring there is here an o-ring which will start to leak and uh, basically the whole uh, content of oil will leak out through this o-ring because this is the lowest part of the transmission let's take this out There comes the little ball. There's a spring and a ball here. And now moves freely. To get this axle out, it does need to come out this way. The axle needs to go this way. The same as the main axle and the reason for that is that it has those small wedges here you can see the hole here is a little bit larger in this part and there's where the wedge is if you try to force this axle the other way you will manage but you will destroy the wedge and perhaps also the axle i've seen it happen on youtube so this is maybe a little bit of a critical part of this how to get this axle out it needs to go out that way the problem is there is no hole here to access it really in, in a good way in the repair manual uh, there is a special tool to do this however i don't have that special tool i have a very ordinary tool to do it looks like this if you can see i try to find the edge of the axle and hammer it gently See, it comes out, no problem. Now I need something smaller. Let's see what we have here. Easy. In, in this little gear you have a bronze bushing that's the only gear that has it except for the Hemi the Hemi transmission does have bronze bushings in the sprockets now it's almost empty Here we have the o-ring I was talking about. Yes. And now we need to take apart this bearing. If you have a special tool to do it, that's fine. I don't have that. I use a different method.
little bit heavier hammer. Now a part that could be somewhat tricky. Use a copper hammer. Here is the bearing that is bad. Yep. I was trying to do it in front of the camera, but I guess I need to use my vice. Now, there are two ways to do this. Either we have a special tool to remove the bearing, or we can do it in a different way.
Almost there. There you have it. So for the rest of this transmission, for the rest of the gears here, it looks rather fine. How do we know if the synchronizer rings or stop rings are okay? There is a simple way to know it. Spin the wheel freely like this and push the synchronizer ring towards the wheel and it should stuck and that's now it's stuck. The stop ring works. Let's try the other one. This one spins freely. Now I'm pushing the synchronizer ring and it stopped. Means it's okay. The next one, let's push the synchronizer ring towards it and it stopped. Now we know they work. One tricky part when we need to assemble this is inside here we have a set of roller bearings, needle bearing. They go outside here. Let's put the stop ring there. That's how it works. It should spin freely and then we push it and it stops. Synchronizer ring works even here. Looks okay. I guess it's fine. Do we need to assemble it, disassemble it more? Well, of course, let's do it. It's not that tricky. We have another one of those very annoying This seems to be a little bit easier than the other one. There you have it. With some simple tools. Here we have the whole 
transmission apart. And this axle looks looks rather okay. I think I'm going to use it. There's no need to replace it. It looks fine. So what we are going to replace are those two bearings. Here you see the 308 with a very special 35 millimeter inner diameter. The standard transmission is 40. No, the standard bearing dimensions now are 40 millimeter inside. And this is 35, very hard to come by. This is a very ordinary uh, bearing. It's the 307, very easy to find. Assembling the transmission, let's start with this one and um, this already has this edge here, if you can see this, if it wouldn't have that we would have to add this one here like this, that's for the early models, we don't need it now since we already have it, so let's go for small polishing here. I take a piece of, of emerald paper. I use the 180 grit and just go over it like this and polish a little bit. take a thinner part and use it for the ceiling surface. There will be a ceiling here. Like that. Nice and shiny. The bearing. This is the old one. Not really too bad. We could use it if we wanted. But since we have a new one here, this is a Japanese bearing. Uh, it's a 6307. That would be fine. Remember this goes on outside like this we will use the brass hammer to tap it down gently there are two ways to do it this is one way there is another way in which you put this axle on top of the main axle you put it in the gearbox and you put the bearing there and the last uh, moment. I don't like that method. I do it this way instead. Let's put it here. We don't need much. I want to heat it because We have now 34.99. Here we have 3503, 3504.03. So it's a couple of hundreds of a millimeter. And it will, should slide 
ได้See, nice and silent, nothing. Remember not to hammer on the outer side of the ring, of the bearing, only on the inside. Carefully to just hit inside and not the outside. We don't want to transfer the force through the through the balls. Spheres. Done. Let's put this away for the moment. The next part. Everything is nice and clean now. We are going to assemble this. First we check the synchronizer ring and those. This spring needs to be inside there underneath a small edge there sometimes they could get out of, of place so that's important that they stay in, in place
bear number two.
Next part is the bottom axle. These are the uh, washers or shims that goes here. And those get worn out and need to be replaced. Let's see. One forty seven, forty six. Let zero there and measure the new one. These are the new one. Those are twenty hundreds of a millimeter thicker. So in total, it will be some O four, and that will affect. The, the end play of the axle in sideways. So these are the new one I'm going to use. These are the going to the thing. So let's take this apart fairly easy just to pull out our broomstick and what have we? We have a number of needle bearings here. 19 or something in each place. This can be used again, but in our service kit we have new ones Not much difference. Not much. Anyhow.
And that is the end of it. That's what it should look like. ready to go. With the new washers. We also need to replace the bushings in here. This is the new one. So what I did, I took this hacksaw blade and cut the bushing open like this and then it's very easy to hammer out here it is you can see how I so an opening in it and in here we have a, a groove so there is no risk that we sew into the metal here. We should clean it up a little bit. There is an opening here, which we need to have in the groove.
axle is there. Now there are two ways to do this. Either we assemble this here on the table and put the whole unit into the gearbox. But then we should mount this bearing, the last thing we do. Otherwise, we, if this bearing is here, we cannot fit it in the gearbox. If the axle, the bottom axle is there, then we have to put this whole unit in there without this bearing and then hammer in the bearing afterwards. And that's, that's one way to do it. And, and some people uh, like that. I don't do it like that. I do it in a different way. We also need to replace this needle bearing here. There you go, plenty of grease. So 
So we will not assemble this on the table and then put it in there because hammering the bearing, mounting the bearing at the last action would mean that we are hammering the bearing on the axle and squeezing all the synchro, uh, synchronizing rings together. The force of the hammering uh, in the bearing will be taken up by the synchronizing rings. And that's, that's a procedure I don't really like. So I prefer to do it this way. There is of course a, a drawback of this solution as well. And that is when we have to mount this axle in the end. There you go, very easy and uncomplicated. We need some room here to install This is the type we are going to use. There you have it. I don't know if it shows so good on the camera, but now the locking ring is in place. Perfect. Can you hear the difference? Nothing. Totally silent. That's what we want to hear. Nothing. What about this one? 
the same thing. Nothing. Completely dead silent. Here we have the uh, place for the wedge and that should be here. So it goes in this direction. What we need to do is to line up this axle What's a little bit tricky about this is to line up the washers. There you go. Now you can see what happens. The axle goes in and the broomstick goes out. Slowly, slowly. This wedge needs to line up with the hole there.
It won't go much further than that. And now comes the most interesting part of this whole exercise. So get this part inside there without uh, dropping the needle bearing and without having any 
misfortune here. We, we need to move this ring a little bit, not too much. If we pull this too much in this direction, the three things here are going to jump out. We don't want that. So let's give it a try. Maybe we manage on the first attempt or we may, maybe might need more.
I know we need new gaskets here, but now I'm just assembling this to, to make a, a check, a, a functional check to see if it works or not. The bearings are completely silent. That's what we were aiming for. Now, this is assembled now with new O-rings here. So let's check out if it works. Two bolts. Now, the magic moment. Will it work or not? Let's try. This is the first year.
card here. Fourth gear. It works perfectly, perfectly fine, and dead silent. I also have new O-rings on these axles. <laughs> 